This is Dolany TV, guys. A big <sighs> welcome back to the Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode here on the channel. Today, of course, you see we're down in Buffalo and then we're down in New Hampshire. Each team has one series left in the year. Okay, that's where we're sitting. So what I want to show you is that the Blue Jays are actually up two games ahead of the Boston Red Sox. That's good news for us. The Bisons are back and so are the Fisher Cats. But I mean, if the Fisher Cats can close in, win even three out of one, we, we have a chance, right? That's what I'm saying. So we have a chance, but it's all going to take quite a bit to deal with. Uh, that's for sure against Binghampton, the Rumble Ponies. I think is what they're called. An interesting name for them this year. Uh, but anyways, the lineups look as such. We've had some clutch performances from guys like Danny Acevedo, who is 319. I mean, he's a third baseman, 23 years old. Not too bad prospect-wise. Then Jared Letbetter, and really just not a lot of guys getting RBIs for us. Alex Avery, who's a 56. He's a B potential at 18 years old. So Alex Avery is really, really good prospect for us. Getting it done, he's up to a 56, and maybe we need to move him a bit higher in the order. I mean, he's only got 43 contact, but Pedro Gomez could possibly use a little bit different of a look, but we'll leave it for now, and we'll see what happens. John Ibar, a C potential 59 overall, and then you got Rolando Torres and a, a bunch of guys. Tom Sung, we're not doing too good. Freddie Meza, 166, 19 years old, backup catcher for us of the future. Looking good. His contact versus right is very, very weak. Keep that in mind. Rory Maxwell. Then you got Kevin Cordova. Woodrow McGreal getting that batting average up to a 254 finally. The kid crushing it. And I mean, he's only 22, so things can only go up from here. William Cornell. And uh, guys, really not looking positive. Maybe we need to switch around Miliano Padilla and William Cornell. They had him in the power spot because he hits home runs, but... If you can get another guy on, that would be a better, more productive way to go. And I mean, other than that, Kelvin Ayers, a 63 overall B potential catcher. Not going to be anything too great for us. And Rico Parra, who's filled in admirably in center field, but you know the story. So that is what we're looking at. Pablo Fernandez, another pitcher I want to take a look at. 64 overall A potential. Hey, he looks great. And... 334 earned run average, very low strikeouts per nine. I mean, 64 overall, so anything could happen, but a good whip for being down here in AAA at only 64 overall. So let's go sim each game, one game at a time here. That's a 5-3 win for the Bisons to get them to 71 and 68. And what was that? An 8-0 win for New Hampshire. Okay. And what about the Blue Jays? How'd we do? 9-6 win. See? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Johnny Thayer getting the win. All right, so let's go sim the first game of September. 11-1 win for New Hampshire. Uh, for the Blue Jays, 7-2. And for Paw Tuck, it, that's a 6-3 loss for them. A 6-3 win for the Bisons. All right, we've got two more games on the schedule. 8-4 victory. Bisons have not finished. And uh, then we obviously lost that one as well. And the Fish Cats lost their last two. So the Bisons put up a couple good wins to end the season, and that will mean, guys, this is where we are at. The time of the year I wanted to talk about. Here we go. We've got prospects all over the place. Ray Cedeno, a 68 overall A or B potential, 24. He looks good, right? Uh, that gets Paul Green into the lineup as well. Look at Paul Green up to a 76. It's time for Paul Green to make an impact here in the MLB. We'll see what he can do for us. He's happy to be in the bullpen. 450K looks good. 79 59 looks good. And he's healthy. That's huge for him. Alex Medeiros. Well, he's doing not too bad, but we will switch him out for Ray Cedeno. And Pablo Fernandez, he's about to... Ooh, look at that A potential still there. He's about to get his first taste of the big league. A five-tool pitcher, curveball, splitter, slider, two fastballs. Guy looks good. And, I mean, you got your regulars in here as well, like Brett Hickman and a couple of guys that made the jump up from the farm. Johnny Thayer, right? Johnny Thayer up to an 80 from a 78 at 22 years old. Man, Johnny Thayer... <sighs> 
gets me excited every time. So that's where we're talking in terms of lineups there and in terms of call-ups here. Not too much going on. Woodrow McGreal getting up, getting a call up here, and we'll see what we can do to get him in at DH once in a while. He's good against really nobody, but you see his batting is boosted up big time. So he's really happy with that. His batting's finally up to a 51 per. He looks good. I like where Woodrow McGreal is at, and he's going to get a couple MLB swings. He didn't get any last year. Leonard Gonzalez, he's had... Two homers, six RBIs, and not many at-bats. Corey Swenson had three at-bats last year. Couldn't get it done, so he's going to get some more at-bats off the bench. And we're going to see if we can ride things out here for the Blue Jays. But things are very tough. You see, we've got that two-game advantage over top of the Boston Red Sox still. And we've got a two-game series against Boston after losing those two. So we got a situation brewing, and we will go one and one with Boston. So how about we maintain that two-game two lead? Okay, two-game lead. We're going to get about to the 13th. Yeah, you know what? Let's get up to the second series against Boston because it's a big one. That's a big win there. Chicago comes calling. We can, uh, we're can. we up by one. Travis already has two home runs. Yeah, we're going to lose that one, aren't we? We lose it in the 13th inning. And then Justin Bohr at first base. Tulo has a 10-game hitting streak. We're going to simulate to the end and win that one as well. And then all of a sudden, here we go, Russell Martin, two outs. Russell Martin has a two-game hitting streak. We end up losing that 8-5. to five. That was a blown chance. And Roberto Simon needs to simulate to the end of this game to win it. There we go. So we win that. Go 4-4, four and four, so that's 500 baseball. That will keep us two games ahead of the Boston Red Sox. See, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to be fine. As the wild card is 83-62, and 62, we're 83-63. and 63. So we've got this in... The law, Kevin Plar, the leading leader in batting average. And you've got Troy Tulitsky with doubles. Man, Tulo's had a great year. How about a 290 average? Most hits he's had since... Oh, actually, hold on. Most hits he's had in his career for us, even though he hit 340 that year previous. And 18 and 79, so he's... He's about to hit uh, career milestones here. 105 is his all-time RBI lead, but I think if he even gets 85 RBIs, I'm happy, right? That's the big thing. But he's played 146 games this year, more than he ever did last year. So he's had more bats to do things, but a lot more hits, and that's what we're counting on out of Tulo. So things looking good. Josh Donaldson, 43 home runs. And let's maybe take a look at how this lineup looks. Look at, man... Devin Travis, his power versus left, left has gone up. B potential is going up by the minute. And 91 overall contact versus right. Justin Bourne, 19 homers, 77 RBIs. Boys, that is ridiculous. Josh Donaldson, 43 and 110. So he's a little bit off the pace of RBIs from a few years previous. But he's looking to be an absolute monster. Absolute monster. This year could hit 45. That's an all-time career high. And he's easily going to hit his 120 RBIs this year. 175 hits is just one back of his MVP series. Uh, runs needs to get a couple more, but he is looking rather solid. 300 batting average, second highest of his career next to the 24 homer campaign. And the 301 average there. So Josh Donaldson looking good. Tulo, we already know. Trey Dent, smashing him, smacking him, cracking him. Look at that. He's got plus three to his contact for right. This kid is going to be the catcher of the future next year. Keep that in mind. Next year, he's the catcher of the future. Weak arm, weak reaction, but we can work on that. Russell Martin, the catcher of the present. 18 homers, 60 RBIs, doing not too bad. Kevin Pilar, 11 and 75. And then you got John Jay, 9 54. Gerard Dyson, 5. And 45. Okay, draw dice and do it not too bad. Kendrys Morales, well, he's really sucking crap up. Justin Smoke, we tried. We tried, bud. And then you've got Corey Swenson, Leonard Gonzalez, and Woodrow McGreal, who still does not have a net bat in his career. Maybe we need to substitute him in for a game and see how he does. Maybe give him one game at the DH position and see if he can pull it off. See what that does for us. Um, so are we facing another righty? Jeremy Hellickson, David Price. Jeremy Hellickson is a righty, I believe. Let's find out. 5-1 loss. Okay, that was brutal. 
could not afford that loss right there. And Woodrow McGreal has four bats and goes 0 for 4. <laughs> brutal, brutal. Okay, let's get Trey Dent back in there and make sure he's happy as a pig in crap to be batting in our lineup. You see Justin Smoke in there. We're going to get Trey Dent back in there because Justin Smoke just not getting it done against lefties. And we have, what, one more? We'll sim this Boston series and set up the interesting effects of what's going to go on. We lose 6-4 there, win 4-1 there, and then Roberto Osuna has the door to shut it, and he does. So Roberto Osuna gets it done, boys, and we are at 85-65. and 65, Two games ahead of the Boston Red Sox. Lineup's looking good, but you talk about the rotation. Marcus Stroman, boom, looks good. Aaron Sanchez, not so good. Marco Estrada, well, he's had a solid year. And then Josh Tomlin, 259 ERA. Doesn't walk anybody. 127 strikeouts, 15 and 8. Awesome. And Jay Happ, whatever. Pablo Fernandez, 648 average. Brutal, brutal, brutal. One win and two losses. You see, he's down to a 62 from a 65 because he's failing above replacement level. So maybe we need to get him out of there. Uh, definitely not into the closer role, pardon me. And we need to get Pablo Fernandez out of the regular lineup for Alex Medeiros. And then Ray Cedeno butchering it as well. Paul Green not throwing any innings yet. So maybe we need to get him in long relief, see what he can do. Johnny Thayer, you know what? The rest of the crew is doing fine. So guys, thank you for tuning in. To this more sim edition of the Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If not, leave a like. And I will catch you guys in the next one.